What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the all new BMW 5 Series Touring. Now of course the new 5 Series, the G60 generation, mm, I'm not sure how it has been received up until now. I think it's uh, been a bit of a letdown to be honest. We've driven the 520 and the i5 M60. This is a Touring and it's different. In many ways, it's different. It's, it's, it's more different than with a G30 and a G31, the predecessor of the G60 and this G61 Touring. The difference is bigger between the two. Now, normally you had the sedan version, which was, you know, a true BMW product, very European based, European focused. And I think that changed with the G60. I think the G60 has been developed for different markets other than Europe. And that might have something to do with the amount of tourings we buy and love in Europe. Um, so I had little hope that BMW decided to really take them apart and focus the touring for the European market and the sedan for the other you know, Asian American markets. I think that's the case. I mean, if you look at this profile, it's a totally different car, if you ask me. I mean, that hip line going all the way to the rear light unit. I quite like it, actually. I think I've regained my hope in this new BMW 5 Series generation because of the Touring. Now, let me walk you through it. Let's see what's changed what kind of engines we are going to get, what's missing maybe in comparison to the G31 and just let's see how we like it. So from a design perspective, there have been a few modern BMWs I didn't really care about, like the 2 Series Grand Coupe, the BMW XM and some others. But uh, with the sedan, I thought it was sort of a mixture of all the BMW modern BMWs I didn't like. So especially the front for me was so 2 Series Grand Coupe. I, I bleh, <laughs> really didn't like that. But with this hip line, you don't have the droopy front anymore because the rear sort of has been risen. So it's like angling down instead of having a bit of a hunchback and, you know, leaning forward. What also helps is that they spec this car really, really well. It's a fire rep metallic without privacy glass and it's an M60. Now, you have that little M performance steering wheel poking through the front windshield, those typical M mirror caps, and it's a little more aggressive styling wise in the front because of the M60 pack. Um, and in total, I think it's a really, really striking looking thing. Pretty impressive. And looking at it from the rear, it is a different, different car. Broadening the car instead of, you know, going down a bit, which the sedan has such a weird line going back. But what I also really like is the rear light unit. This really reminds me of the G21 current 3 Series Touring, which I think uh, is the best looking BMW nowadays. It really is something completely different compared to the sedan. Um, what's also really handy is that you have loads of space in the rear. Now, you know, I own a G21 M340i uh, because I also own two dogs and two kids. And for me, having a Touring is, is super, super handy. You know, you just throw them in, close it up, everyone's comfortable, and it is just such a practical experience. And for me, that is Pinnacle BMW. I do hate the fact that they have lost a little bit of the BMW Touring pedigree, a separately opening rear window. Um, so you always have like a button underneath here. The G21 has it, the G31 has it, every Touring has it, and you can just pop open the rear window and, you know, just grab something without everything falling out or just push something in. 
you know, give your dogs a treat without them running loose, stuff like that. And I think it's part of the pedigree of a BMW Touring, that feature. They've ditched it, which I think is a true shame. And you know why? Because of weight reduction. They wanted the i5 Touring to be as light as possible. So yes, they have succeeded at that, saving like 200 grams of weight of two hinges and a hatch. Why? Yeah, I think that's honestly a shame. This is the biggest, fattest, most powerful i5 you can get, the M60. But I don't feel like the floor is higher than it normally is. So I think they've done a great job with that. And I do hope that it won't change with the plug-in hybrid that's coming, the 550E. You can also get a 530E, but the one to have is, is that B58 plug-in hybrid 550E. That is going to be quite an interesting car, I think, for many markets. With the last generation, the G31 LCI, we could not get a 545E Touring. They just wouldn't make that car. You could only get the four-cylinder hybrid, the 530E, as a Touring. So with this generation, they're going to do any engine in any shape. So you can get an M5 as a Touring, you can get the 550E as a Touring, and I really, really like that. And I feel like Tourings are really starting to come alive again. I mean, come on guys, let's stop doing stupid crossovers and SUVs. Tourings, they are much more economical, better to afford, more fun to drive, and cooler to look at than your stupid crossover SUV. Go and buy a Touring. Hashtag Touring everything. So in the interior, I do have to get used to the fact that you don't get the old comfort seats from like a 7 series in a 5 series anymore. But I am starting to get used to the whole design revolution at BMW. And I think in certain specs, it does work okay-ish. And I think this is one of those specs. But let's have a look at the rear space. So that is my seating position. And that is really, really spacious. And you also have what I always really like, and you will start to like it once you have kids. This, this sunscreen, this little privacy shade. Really like that. No more Hello Kitty sun visor right here in your car. That should be good news. So guys, the all new BMW 5 Series G61 Touring. Let me know what you think of it. Is it better than the sedan G60? Is it a worthy successor to the G31 Touring? Write it all down there. Thanks.